And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Flash Friday on the Tom Like the Show. Headlights on across North America on this Flash Friday. Oh, yes. Headlights on. Ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, show them your rack. We flash you, you flash us. We want to see your cans. Get to it. Step it up. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. A female listener named Janet Kim writes in and says, Can you please at least get Sarah Silverman's name correct? It's not Sarah Jessica Silverman. Sorry. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. Rose is calling from Portland, Oregon on the Tom Likas show. Hello. It's actually Portland, Oregon. Hello, Tom. Oh, it's, I thought it was Portland. No, no. Well, I, I just wanted to comment. I was doing some work from home, and I just wanted to give a, a piece of my advice uh, to all the men out there. Are you ready, men? A real man is one who has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, no, no, darling, this is not and a number Christ- two. This, this is not a Christian radio station, dear. Make- this is not a Christian radio station. Uh, we are not here to do religious conversions on the air. Well, the second thing would be, and that they make a commitment. Uh, not going to let you do it. You see, uh, you're not listening to me, and uh, you forget that I'm in charge. It's my show, and I control the button. Jesus has very little control here. I'm in control here. Do you understand that? You may be in control now. Yes, and I will remain in control. Thank you so much. There are many Christian radio stations in Portland, and you are more than welcome to call in and uh, tell them about your personal relationship with uh, that guy. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Alonzo on the Tom Likas show. And before you update us on what happened, Alonzo, tell everybody what you and I talked about the last time you called in. Hello, Tom. Hello, Alonzo. All right, I'm back to give you an update on what happened over here in West Covina. Well, a couple of weeks ago, like two weeks ago, two, three, two weeks ago before I called, I called you. I was in the Walmart parking lot, and uh, I went to buy some groceries for my parents, right? And uh, right before this, uh, I have a new car, right? And my brother bought me a sticker at, like, a local print shop. You can print your own stickers up. And he put, like, it's one-on-one in training in the back, across the, across the, like, the back mirror, I guess? The rear? Yeah. You know, the back mirror of my car? Yeah. It stands out for everyone. Well, when I was in there, in the park inside the Walmart, uh... Someone broke my window, as I told you before, and uh, I had to call the police, and uh, I didn't end up doing anything for, like, the first hour, because I just ended up thinking that the insurance would pay for it. But uh, Mr. Lancaster gave me the advice to call the police and uh, pursue some civil action over here. Right. Exactly what I did. Mr. Lancaster? How did it go? I'm waiting to hear what happened. All right, this is what happened. Right when I hung up with you, uh, I went back to the Walmart. So it was, it was within, like, 24 hours, they told me. So I went back within, like, five hours, and we reviewed the tape, right? We had to go back there with the police. We had to call the police. So we went 
to put the tape, and we called up the we called. We called uh, to show the, the the police our damages, and they came back with a report. We went inside, and they uh, they looked at the, the tape, and they saw the woman actually go inside the Walmart first, talk to someone. And the funny thing about when she went to go talk to someone, it was actually one of the coworkers who worked there in the pharmacy. So uh, when we went to the coworker and talked to him, who it was, it was his sister who called, who uh, broke my window. So uh, that's how we caught her. And then uh, we took her to court. They arrested her, and they got her for vandalism on my car, and they made her pay for my window. I, I guess love it. It was awesome. They, they were going to get her with a solid battery, but I wasn't inside of my car. They were going to get her with a felony or a misdemeanor, but they got her a misdemeanor for vandalism on my car. Yeah, they'll use the felony to get her, and then ultimately the, the misdemeanor will stick. Yeah, that's what they got her with. So I got my car but paid a uh, new window back there. And, and, and you didn't have to go through your insurance company. Right, so my insurance paid the same. She paid right. It. Wasn't that worth doing? It was worth it, because I was going to go through my insurance, and they were going to pay for it. And my insurance probably would have went up a little bit. Yeah, but even when it goes up a little bit, you're paying it every month, or every three months, or every six months, or every year. Exactly, so I have yeah. to thank you for uh, having that lady, that bitch, pay for my thing. <laughs> I love that. That's what she gets. That's what she gets for she's stupid anyway for, for uh, being one of the coworkers, the sisters, or whatever the hell she was. Right. I'm trying to pull that out at her at her brother's job. Oh, what a what an idiot. You are right about that. So uh, anyway, I got your stickers back on my windows. I love you know it. I mean? And if, if they do it again, you'll do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Love right, thank it. you, Tom, for everything, and uh, can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Kim on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great, Kim. You are amazing. I've been listening to you for over 10 years now, and I absolutely love you. I've also been a grotto girl for you in the past at the Playboy Mansion, and wow. I'm calling you to tell you a funny story. I'm driving to train some clients about 7 o'clock this morning, so it's pretty early, and I'm about half asleep, and I'm driving in your Belinda. And driving down the street, and all of a sudden, I see this guy turn the corner, and something catches my eye. And he literally has a post-it notes in all different colors, all the way down the side of his car that says, Flash Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, was, I, it cracked me up, because you don't ever see that in your Belinda normally. Usually, I see it on the freeway, and let me tell you, over the years... I, um, you guys have seen my website years ago and everything when we did the whole grotto thing and, um, I've been a, a model for years and so I, I've done the Flash Friday thing for you. Let me tell you, I've, I've been a, you know, an avid listener and triple D boobs and everything, my man. So I've, I've helped you out and all your friends over the years and, uh, usually on the freeway though. It always happens on the freeway. I understand. So, yeah, it cracking me up, and I looked at this guy and started laughing so hard because he, all these post-it notes are flying in the air down, <laughs> down your <laughs> balloon. <Bulletin. laughs> it was great. It was great. So I had to call and tell you because I just thought it was like the fun. If I had a camera, I would have taken a picture and sent you. Wow. Sent it to you. Yeah, it was great, and I was listening to you uh, last Friday. I tried to call, but um, it was right at the end of the program, and you were talking about maybe doing a show out here at the Fox Fire. Yes. Yeah, because I live right down the street from the Fox Fire, and you guys were cracking me up talking about it, because we always call them the blue-haired. <laughs> <laughs> to go over to the Fox Fire and, you know, and watch the blue-haired, it, it's a crack-up to go over. I'm telling you, it, it is entertainment at its best. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I just I wanted to tell you that and and did I flash him? Absolutely. So <laughs> I wanted to tell you but there's a little more that goes with that story. Since I've seen you last at the mansion and everything, I had breast cancer last year. So Oh I'm sorry. I actually lost my breast, but I have new boobies. Look at you. So, 
Yeah, so I have new ones. They're not triple Ds anymore, but let me tell you, I'm still beautiful and young, and, and they look great. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to flash them. And that was the first time since my surgery and everything. So it made me Good feel for good. you. Good for you. <laughs> Kim, I'm proud of you. Thank you so much for the call. Tom Lightyear's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Like is Show. Flash Friday. Wide open telephones. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Cody on the Tom Like is Show. Hello. Cody. Yo. Here we are. What's happening, man? Still a radio show here. Cool, cool. Um, I was just curious if you've talked to Russ since he's been um, off the air for a while. I mean, I heard what happened. I read it on the Internet. I just didn't know if you've talked to him and heard his side of the story or, you know, your thoughts on it. Well, first of all, uh, for people who are listening who don't know Russ Martin, Russ Martin precedes us on our Dallas station, uh, Live 105.3. Um, he's the number one radio personality in Texas and has been for a long time. He's been a good friend of our show. A good friend to me personally. And um, I haven't spoken to Russ uh, recently, uh, about a week ago, he was arrested. And there's been this big uh, scandal about it because this, uh, you know, the story's out there. And uh, of course, it was a he said, she said story where uh, you have uh, Russ's fiance, it said there, right. uh, making allegations. And uh, because Russ is the accused, uh, we haven't heard what Russ's story is yet. Right. And um, I know from personal experience of having been arrested for something I didn't do that, uh, first of all, number one, in, in the United States of America, you are innocent until proven guilty. True, uh, true. Number, two, number two, I don't know any of the specifics of Russ's case, and I told him uh, when we communicated by email – I'm not a gossip hound. I said, I don't want to know what the specifics are of your case. Don't even tell me. So I don't know the specifics and his point of view. And frankly, his attorney would probably recommend that he not talk to me about it anyway. Yeah, that, all I, it, was, it was said that on the Internet. Yeah, all I would say is uh, just speaking generally about women is that a woman can assassinate a man and assassinate his career. By throwing words around like hair pulling or pushing or gun or you name the word. And uh, none of that necessarily had to have ever happened. Sure. Um, well, now, who knows what happened? I don't know what happens between two people. I have no idea. I know that Russ is a friend, and I tend to give him the benefit of the doubt because I've known him for so long. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do what everybody should do. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be following the case, and I'll see uh, what comes out if it ever gets to a trial. And uh, then we'll deal with that time. My guess is, I'm guessing, this will not have ever go to a trial. But who knows? I, I, I'm 1,500 miles away. I'm just a friend of Russ, and I don't know the specifics of the case. I have my own experience in this area. Um, and all I know is the things I was accused of doing years ago, I simply didn't do. Right. I, just, I was just curious if you talked to him or not. Well, I, I haven't. We haven't spoken. We've emailed back and forth. I'm just going to say that just because people make allegations doesn't make them true. Right? Has he um, has he said when he might be able to get back on the air? Is is KLI going to let him back on pretty soon, or do you know? Well, I, a lot of that I'm sure, and I'm not in there. I, I'm I'm not involved in the case. And I'm not involved. Um, in the uh, management decisions that they make at the radio station. Right. I'm sure um, some of it's political, too, you know. No, I don't think there's anything political. Uh, it's my belief. You know, I'll be honest with you. I was once arrested on a charge of domestic violence myself. It's no secret. Uh, the information is out there on the Internet, and people write to me about it from time to time. Uh, the allegation was 15 years ago. And um, I didn't do it the way Russ did it. The day after... I had been uh, held over in the jail for the night. I went back on the air. Hmm. And do you know what it's like doing a show like that? Here's how the show goes. Okay, here I am. I'm the host of the show. And you may have read about a story about me. This is like back when I did it, okay? Right. You may have read a story about me just 
All I ask is you reserve judgment until you hear my side. Because you're innocent until proven guilty. I assure you, I didn't do the things in the arrest report. And now let's go to the phones. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, are you a wife beater? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. thanks for calling. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, why won't you talk about this? What are you, a coward? No, my attorney said I couldn't talk about it. Well, if you're not guilty, what do you have to hide? And it goes on like that. And I had a four-hour show, four hours of that every day for months. Well, yeah, I can see it being the same here. So don't. there's no conspiracy theories. I'm not in the middle of this. My guess is that Russ Martin will be on the air as soon as it's feasible. You think Just it's a more, guess. Um, him personal or kind of a combination of both between the, the station and him being being off? Well, I mean, there's a lot of people involved in a decision like that. You know, uh, CBS, who I work for and Russ also works for, big company, right. legal department, layers of management, lots of people involved in the decision. And I have no inside information. I just happen to work at the same company, and I've got to believe that there's a lot of people weighing in on this and trying to do what's right for the company and also for us. True. Sure. And, um, you know, you have to be careful what you wish for. Um, do you want Russ to be on four hours a day where he gets a, they can't talk about the 3,000-pound gorilla? You really want that? <laughs> yeah, I kind of see what you're saying. You know, and that's I, I, I speak this way and I tell you this because I've been there. I've had to do it. I know what it's like. I wish they would have taken me off the air back when it happened to me, but they didn't. They made me work. Right. By the way, uh, when that happened to me, it was in Boston in 1993. Uh, do you know who else worked at that station? Not a clue. I was way young then. Gavin Spittle. Really? Yes, the program director of Live 105.3. Wow. He produced, a sports, he produced a sports talk show, and that's when I first met Gavin. Small world. Yes, so uh, again, um, I wish Russ all the best in the world. I'm behind him. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I will look objectively at anything that comes out, but my experience in general with women making allegations is that, uh, you know what, if things are that bad, why are you still there? It's been my experience. You know, I, when people gave me crap about my situation back in 1993, I was married another seven years after that. Hmm. Now, if things were so bad, why did she stay for another seven years? Exactly. So I would say that when somebody stays, it, 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 and any woman stays, just in general, I'm not speaking about any women in particular. My opinion is that when women stay, there's more to it than just, oh, it was dangerous. I was afraid. I mean, uh, just my experience, my personal experience. Right. Makes sense. All right. So I didn't want anyone to think that I wouldn't comment on this uh, because I really don't have any inside information. I have nothing to fear by commenting on it. Uh, but everybody knows that I'm a friend of Russ, and he's a friend of mine, and, um, you know, blood is thicker than water. Yep. Cool. Well, that's what I was curious about, Tom. Appreciate it. Cody, thank you. Appreciate the call. And the Russ Martin has been nothing but great to us. So, uh, we hope for the best for Russ Martin. Um, there's no point in taking 50 calls about this because I've just told you everything I know. So please don't inundate Dino now with a bunch of calls asking the same question over and over. We just talked about it. I don't want to make it any harder on anybody than it already is. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Deborah on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Deborah. Go ahead, Deborah. I, I just have uh, two questions in this statement. My first question is, um, I'm just wondering, I'm not placing judgment on you, I'm just wondering, if uh, your first wife hadn't changed her mind about wanting children, do you think you would still be married? Possibly. Possibly. We were very happy. In fact, that argument about having children was the one and only argument we ever had. It was the first argument we ever had. Yeah. And... um you know, uh, 14 years after the fact, 
Wow. Uh, my first wife called me in Los Angeles and said it was the biggest mistake she ever made and, and asked for my forgiveness. Does she have children now? That's the irony of it. She never remarried, oh. never had children. Interesting. Well, my other question is a completely different topic, but I was reading up on you because I'm a, a new listener, and I was reading about that crazy woman who confessed to murder on your show. Did they ever catch her? I can't comment on what I know about that case. Okay. Well, but when I know something, <laughs> uh, I am going to comment on it. Okay. Uh, but uh, the fact is that... Um, you know, I don't want to do anything to jeopardize a police investigation. Certainly. And I did see that it was kind of current, so I wasn't sure. And yes. then my last thing is a statement about a comment that you made on this show a couple of days ago. This man was talking about, I don't know, he was a musician and he was getting with this girl who was a dancer and she thought she was lying about her virginity. And you just made a comment about how women bleed uh, when they have sex the first time, but... In all reality, women nowadays, their hymen breaks well before the first time they have sex. So I don't think that's a clear indication to show that they're a virgin or not. Uh, well, the, the reality is that uh, there are women who don't plead and women who do. Right. But I just think that's not a good indication of someone being a virgin or not. Well, I think the fact that they're 38 years old is a hint also. <laughs> Was that the age? I didn't think I Correct. Got 38. <laughs> I see. Well, then, there you go. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I had to say. Thank you so much. Deborah, thank you. Tom, Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. It's the Tom Likas Show. Flash Friday. Wide open telephones at 1 800 5800 Tom. 1-800-5-800-866. Sean on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Long-time listener, first-time caller. Doing great. Well, you see, uh, I just got a phone call from the wife. And uh, I've been married for a year, uh, going on a year, like in a couple days here. And I've got a four-and-a-half-month-old baby. Beautiful so, daughter. So you got married because you knocked your wife up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. By the way, I tell you not to do that, but go ahead. Yeah, I know you do. I'm sorry. And I really am sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will be. Uh, yep. Anyways, uh, you know, so we, we go through our stages. Where hey, 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 watch your mouth. Oh, watch sorry, your mouth. Sorry, We're on sorry, the air. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, anyways, she just called me right now. I'm on the way home from work. I work about a 50-hour-a-week job, and I commute uh, about an hour and a half every day. And uh, I work hard, and I have a couple hobbies I like to do, you know, on the weekends. I, I, I dive, I go fishing, and I surf. And I try and get, you know, I get at least one of those three in every weekend. And they may take anywhere from, you know, three to six hours that I'm gone. And she calls me right now, and she says... Uh, when you get home, we really have to talk because, and I try to get, well, why? Well, I don't want to tell you why. It has to do with the weekends. What am I doing? I already know where she was going with that. And then, uh, so I get her to start talking and she goes, you know what? If you really think you need that much time and space, then you're going to have to take that somewhere else. But she's just using that as a, there is no way she, she would die if I took that, if I took my stuff and my space and my money and my hobbies and, and me anywhere else. So, uh, how do you think I should handle this, Tom? <laughs> you know how I think you should handle this. <laughs> well, come on. Give me, give me, give me. You had those hobbies. Here. You had those hobbies before she married you. Exactly. And she was perfectly happy with them then, and you're not giving them up. Exactly. That's that's my point exactly. And they keep me sane. That is what, you know, my my release, my stress release, my re relaxation. and. So you are not happily married, by the way. You're not. No, I know I'm not. Just the way you're describing those weekends. Like, you can't wait to get away from her. <laughs> exactly. And she knows it. Yep. So you got married. Why? Because I knocked her up. Yeah, but you didn't have to get married. Is there a law? 
No, there definitely is not. Why did you do it? <sighs> wasn't thinking at the time, I guess, and uh, now I'm. Haven't you heard me I say? Didn't... Have you heard me say not to do that? Yes, I certainly have. But you did it anyway. Yes, I certainly did. Why? Why did you think you knew more than I did about this? It's not, that's not. You know what? At the time, I was kind of. I just felt. To be honest, I kind of felt forced into the situation. You know, she has by who? Just that of everybody, like my family, her family, uh, just just every, anyone that and everyone. You that didn't have to listen to anybody. Yes, I know. And uh, you know, more than any, I come from a broken family, extremely broken. And uh, more than anything, you know, I, I always wanted my children, you know, to have you know everything I never had, but. I don't think, and I knew when I was doing it that uh, she wasn't the one. And by the way, what? Hey, hey! No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, you know what? There's no excuse for that. I mean, what, what were you thinking? You already come from a broken family. Why would you take a chance like that? Yeah, there's no excuse for that. What birth control was she using? None, actually. I was I was out of town for about two and a half months, and uh, we had just started seeing each other a couple weeks before I went out of town. And she had multiple doctor's appointments where she was supposed to go get on birth control, and I should have known that every time she didn't go that it was a setup. Of, women who are not on birth control want to have a baby. Yep. And I've told you that. Yes, you have. And I was right. You you always are. But you could have saved yourself all this trouble. <laughs> You're right, I know. What do I do now, though? Oh, now you want help? Yes, now. now so I now you went help. from the expert mechanic <laughs> to the guy who gives you a bad brake job, and now you want me to fix a bad brake job. If, well, I, I know you're, you're capable of doing that. Well, but the point is, it shouldn't have to get to this point. Yep, you're there right. There shouldn't be a baby. There shouldn't be a wife. 100% correct, Tom. So, the only thing left you can do is leave. If you want to be involved with the kid's life, stay nearby. You'll be forced to pay, but you're paying anyway. Yep. And then enjoy your life. You're not going to be bullied around by her. Forget it. Sounds good to me. Are you going to make a stupid move like this again? Definitely not. Definitely not. And I knew, I knew when it was happening. I knew before I married her and when I married her that, I don't know, I, I, just, I knew it was not the right choice. So why'd you do it? I don't know. I thought, you know, I, mean, I thought I mean, there was a chance. Maybe, maybe, maybe it worked. No, it doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. If it isn't working when you get married, it isn't working after you get married. Correct. But I told you that, too. Yes, you did. I told you the first six months are the best. Man, they, they, they were. <laughs> and right they about were? six months. Right about at six months. You, you had six right good months? Bus. Wait a minute. You had six good months? Actually, yeah, I did. Oh, no, actually, yeah, I gave it actually more, more like four. Mm -hmm. Probably four. Uh huh. So I'm almost home. I pulled over to talk to you, and uh, she was taught when she was telling me all this stuff on the phone while I'm driving on the 405. I couldn't help but laugh. I was laughing, uh, laughing insanely, and uh, then of course that makes her even more upset. So this is going to be interesting. But well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. She's not going to take that. She's not going to take what little bit I have left of my own. I just thought you might have some words of wisdom as a... Well, by the way, situation. by the way, you've been wrong about everything so far. Don't be so sure she's not going to take everything she can get. Oh, I'm sure. You're right about that, too. Don't be telling me, oh, she won't take what little I have. <laughs> you just haven't been through this yet. Well, my, financially... If, if it were to have, you know, she could take, obviously, we all know how that works. But uh, as far as uh, my dignity and, you know, my hobbies and 
the things I like to do, whether it works or not, I'm still going to be doing them. So tonight's the night you're going to break up with her, right? <laughs> we'll see. No, no, no. You have control over that. I do have control over that. Uh, tonight, tonight, I'm going to tell her she needs to, you know, I give her, I give her opportunities. I try and get her to go out with her friends, you know, and she always just wants to stay home and spend you time can't with family. Shot. And uh, you know, and my Sean. point is, uh, shot. Go ahead. You haven't listened to me before. You can't change other people. Right about that. So stop trying. That's uh, I haven't looked at it that way. That's a good way to look at it. If she doesn't want to, st- if she doesn't want to go out, if she wants to stay at home, that's who she is. Yep. Stop trying to get her to do something different. You can't accomplish that. She used to love to go out and party and hang out with her friends, but now then she, she does. had your baby. Exactly. Exactly. Hang on a second here. Uh, John, what did you want to say here? I, I, I Just unbelievable here. What did you want to say to Sean? I just wanted to tell him to stop thinking with his girl's vagina. And if he's a long-time <laughs> listener, first-time caller, then he should have learned a long time ago not to mess up like that. Correct. I think take my call, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. All right, you know what you have to do. Now go do it. All right? Jesus. Unbelievable. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Vincent on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Hey. Um, I just want to call and just say, uh, I don't like listening to all these guys bitching about the girlfriend, you know what I mean? Like, why do they call you and just, I mean, they know what you're going to say. So, I mean, why even call? Like, just dump No, let me tell say. you. Let me tell you what they're going to say. Okay. Here's what they're going to say. Uh, they want me to say, you know what, pal? I met a lot of guys who made a lot of mistakes, but you are the exception to the rule. <laughs> You're the one guy who's done everything right. Yeah, well, I, I don't know, because I listen to your show and it sounds like, like, I don't know, like some kind of female show or something. Guys just complain. I don't want to hear them talk bitching about their girlfriends, about, oh, my girlfriend did this, and, you know, so I did this, and my girlfriend did that, and it's just, it's, it's, so boring and so repetitive. They sound like little bitches. Yep. I agree so, with you. I just, and also I want to say, um, you know, uh, uh, I have a per- I have the epitome of a like is 101 dropout. It's, his name is Al Bundy. <laughs> well, there are many. Yeah, but it, that's just like the epitome of a 101 dropout. So I just want to say that, Tom, and just take me out with the bomb here, please. Here you go. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Claude on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Claude. Claude. Tom, how you doing? I'm okay. I love listening to you tear those pussies apart. <laughs> Best thing ever. There's so but many I, of them. I had a question for you. It's about our beloved Los Angeles Kings. Yes. Well, I read a bunch of stuff and heard a bunch of stuff about Rob Blake wanting to stay with the team and finish out his career and all this nonsense. But And then he ended up and he left. Did he leave on his own? Did they trade him? What was the whole story behind that? Rob Blake's contract was up. Right. And Rob Blake said, although later I saw conflicting reports, that no one from the Kings called him about <laughs> renewing it. And so he yeah. went... And uh, signed with the San Jose Sharks for $5 million for one year. So where do you think uh, the whole Kings future, and where do you think they're going to finish out this year? Last place. And worse than last year? Last in the conference. Oh, man. So I mean, what do you they... think, Rob Blake will come back? No, I think this will be Rob Blake's last year. Uh, yeah, and then he'll end up working up there? Or working for the Kings, who knows? But uh, we will see. Claude, thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com.
It's the Tom Likas Show. Southern California's FM Talk Station. 97.1 Free FM.